Hello and welcome to my beginner's guide to Kerbal Space Program. In the previous episode, we talked about career mode, and in the process of talking about that, I picked up a mission to rescue Aldrim Kerman, who has gotten himself stuck in low orbit about Kerbin. In this episode, I'm going to be building a vessel capable of going up, meeting up with him, and then returning him back safely to the surface. I'm going to use this as an opportunity to talk about something we haven't talked about yet, fuel flow. In particular, how we can use the external fuel duct to control the way fuel flows around our vessels. And armed with that, I'm going to show you a little technique called asparagus staging. Don't worry, nothing to do with the vegetable. Instead, what it is is a way of getting the most out of your engines during your ascents. And I'll even have a bit of time to show you one more thing you can do with fairings. So let's get started. All right, so I've already built myself a little orbiter to get the job done. Uh, again, not to break pattern, this is my seventh rocket, and this is it. So I'm using the Mark 1-3 command pod, so it can hold up to three Kerbals. Uh, and then I didn't want to give it a whole lot of delta V. Down here, is this on vacuum? It is, yep. 631 meters per second of delta V. That's enough to get up actually into an orbit several kilometers high. The mission specifically said that our person to rescue is in low orbit. Low orbit is defined as being below 250 kilometers in altitude, so this thing has got that kind of thing covered. Um, I don't think I need to talk about it too much. There's not too much exciting happening here. What I want to talk about is the booster that's going to lift it up. I want to get into something new. So we're going to get ourselves a decoupler, and under payload here we have the... AE-FF1 Airstream Protective Shell, the 1.25 meter version. They come in different sizes, the first one you unlock. This is a part we've looked at before and we talked about the different modes in which you could deploy it. You can leave it in what I like to call the confetti deploy or you can toggle on the clamshell deploy. There is a third option. If I go down here, I can see that I can go down right at the bottom, it says fairing stage. If we look over here to the right at our staging diagram, you can see that the fairing is in our staging diagram. If I press fairing staged, it comes off the staging diagram. So now it won't be staged anymore. Now you can deploy it. You can, during the mission, right click on it and say deploy the fairing, or you can use action groups and those kind of things. And there might be reasons for you to do this. But I kind of like it this way because what it does is it forms this kind of cowling and it doesn't deploy and it, I don't know, it, it kind of, to me, I like this. It adds to the cool factor, I think, of this rocket. You might disagree. That is perfectly up to you. Now comes time to build the booster, a topic we have also looked at in the past. So if you need to, you might want to go back and refresh yourself on that. But uh, suffice to say, it ended up with an upper stage with 1,203 meters per second of delta V and a thrust to weight ratio of 2, which I was reasonably happy with and then we're going to add on some radial boosters but this is where i want to do something different no more srbs i'm going to do something a little bit different stick those on there and i'm going to grab these tanks i'll put these on the top like that and we're going to put on i got some new fancy nose cones on there put that right whoops Notice that it's starting to glitch in a little bit with the fairing. Don't like that. So what we're going to do is I'm going to grab this tank with the translation tool, the move tool. We're going to just slide that down so that those nose cones aren't interfering with our fairing. A little bit more, I think. That looks a little bit better. All right. And then on the bottom of this, I'm going to put an LV-T45 swivel for some gimbling. So that's going to give me some some control on there in addition to everything else. So, okay, this is starting to look kind of like a thing. Now, remember that this Delta V is including our orbiter up here to get that out of the mix. I think the simplest thing to do is just turn that thrust right down to zero. So now this total 2,883 is just these two boosters, not enough. If we take a look at our thrust to weight ratio, notice that it's kind of small. And here's where we're gonna get into something a little bit new. I would like this again to be, this is by no means at launch, 
Uh, so I, this is going to be in the upper part of the atmosphere. I'd like this to be again in, in and around the two range. Here's a way that I can do that. One thing is I can start making these boosters smaller so it's not pushing up quite so much weight. But then I can also do this. I mean, why not just have all three of these engines going at the same time? Now that thrust to weight ratio is up to 2.36. That's plenty of thrust. They're all going at the same time, but that is a little bit of a problem. And in fact, when I did that, I took a bit of a knock on the Delta V department. If I put that back up, previous Delta V, 2,883, put that back down. 2509 so I took a knock on the Delta V department doing that as well there's no guarantee in fact I know for a fact these this engine is using this tank and these two engines are using this tank and then the tank above it so these engines have more fuel available to them so they'll likely burn for longer as well because these are different engines they're gonna use fuel at different rates so <laughs> you know they're gonna not end at the same time so you're going to end up having to drag around this kind of dead engine before you can end up staging it here's a solution if we go into our fuel tank section there is something that's not a fuel tank it is called the external fuel duct and what this is is a hose a duct that you can use to control the flow of fuel between stages so i'm going to grab this I'm going to click on uh, the radial stage and I'm going to move towards the core stage and I'm going to zoom right in on this because there is a detail I want people to notice that there are arrows on this duct and this is showing which way the fuel is flowing. So fuel is being pumped from this tank over to this core tank. Okay, and as soon as I did that, my Delta V went back up. 2857 okay the reason why that's happening is because all of these engines all now firing at the same time but fuel is being pumped over to this this end this tank keeping it full so this tank is going to remain full while these tanks are being drained what that means is that these tanks will go dry these engines will no longer fire at that point we can do our staging and this tank will still be full and this engine can keep on going so even though this engine's going right from the very very beginning it will still be on a fuel tank full tank after the staging now there is something that ksp gives us to help us sort of see that visually if we right click on an engine here one of these radial engines there is this fuel delivery overlay I'm gonna click that on so what is this showing this is showing where this engine is getting its fuel from it is only getting its fuel from these two tanks okay, that's it so when these two tanks go dry this engine no longer has fuel and it's gonna turn off let's turn that one off but now let's go to the middle one click on that one put on fuel overlay and whoa it looks very very complicated but we're gonna pause and we're gonna think about this for a second this is telling us where is this engine getting fuel well number one is it's getting from this tank right here but if we follow these lines backwards it's also getting them from these tanks on the side through our external fuel duct so this engine is not only running on this tank of fuel, but also these ones and these ones. So this one in the middle is going to stay full. Gives you one other thing to notice to, that helps you along. If we take a look at the numbers here, notice here it says P30. These ones say, this one in the middle here says P20. This is the priority of the fuel flow. The higher numbers have higher priority, which means that they're gonna get drained first. So in other words, these tanks that have 30s on them are going to get drained before the tank that has 20 on them and in fact this is also telling you that fuel is going to be drained from these four tanks equally you can actually more directly change that if we right click on one of these tanks here there's actually a fuel priority button here that you can make this number go up 
or make that number go uh, here. This way I'm going up and this way I'm going down. So you can actually increase or decrease the fuel priority on individual tanks on a tank by tank basis. I'm not gonna do that for this rocket. I don't have a need to, but you might find that you do. So it's a useful thing to have. There are a number of reasons you might be doing that and we'll probably get to some of them in future installments of this series. Right now, let's see how we're doing with our rocket. So Delta V wise, still not enough, 2,857. Well, you know where I'm gonna go with this. I'm gonna grab these two boosters I've already made. I'm gonna hold the Alt key. I'm gonna click them to make a copy. I'm gonna put two more. Try and get the level of these right, the same. That's close enough and put them right here. And now our Delta V has crept up to 3,890. But we can still do better. Number one, if I take a look down here at the bottom, this thrust the weight of this bottom stage is pitiful because it's only these two engines down here going. We need to have more engines. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these engines and I'm gonna drag them down and do that. So now what I have, right, um, is I have more than enough thrust down here at the bottom, but again, I took a hit on the Delta V. Oh, I already got the fuel lines going in there. Is there a way I can use these fuel lines to increase Delta V again? And the answer to that is, well, absolutely there is. If right now, all four of these, let's click on the middle stage, and we'll dare to take a look at that fuel flow priority. There it is. This middle engine is drawing fuel from all four of these equally. Okay, so all four of these radial bits are all going to drain at the same time. That's not the best way to do this. We're going to turn that fuel flow off. It's starting to give me a headache. I'm going to grab this external fuel duct. I'm going to keep it much the same place, but rather than flowing it towards the middle, I'm going to flow it to here. And remember, I got two-way symmetry on, so it did the exact same thing here on the other side. So let's think about how that's going to work now. Now, this fuel line is feeding fuel from this booster to this booster, which in turn is feeding fuel to the main core. I've created another level in the hierarchy. Let's take a look at that. Turn on the fuel flow priority. And in particular, don't get dizzy with all the arrows. Look at the numbers. This is now 50, right? This is now 30 along this booster. This is now 20. So what's this telling me? This is telling me that it's at the beginning, it's going to be just draining from these tanks first, regardless of which engines are running. It's gonna be draining from these tanks on the side. So these two radio boosters I just added are going to go first. Well, if that's the case, let's stage them first. So we're gonna check our staging and that's actually the way I have the staging right now. So we're gonna run all four of these engines, but all the fuel is just on these ones, these two radial tanks. These tanks will go dry pretty quickly because we got four engines running off of them. Then we're gonna stage those and they're going to be gone. Once they're gone, sorry, I'm gonna turn this off. It's giving me a headache. <laughs> Once these are gone, well, then I wanna go with these ones again. So um, let's see here. These engines on the side here were started right from the very, very beginning. I would like to get this engine in on the game because um, I would like to get this middle engine in on the game because remember we needed it for the extra thrust here. So reviewing now, all four of these outside radial engines all go on at the same time at the very, very beginning, running just on these tanks. These tanks go dry, we stage. Then our central core engine comes on, but these two are still on here, so we'll have three engines going. We needed that for, the, again, the thrust to weight ratio. Again, though, because of these fuel lines, these engines will be feeding that middle tank. That middle tank will still be staying full, so when these tanks are all dry, it will stage again. And then finally, we'll just run it on the middle stage, which will all be full. And if we take a look at our Delta V, we got, we're very comfortable at all of our thrust to weight ratios. If we take a look at our Delta V, it's now up to 3,809, more than what we need. I feel so comfortable. In fact, I'm gonna take these tanks off. I'm gonna replace them with some smaller ones, put them back, and there you go. There I have a nice little rocket 3,663 meters per second of Delta V. 
and I use these fuel lines to control the way the fuel flows. So rather than just adding on more boosters and more engines, especially these dead upper stage engines that you just gotta drag up doing absolutely nothing, I'm now making a lot of use of all of these engines all the way up through my ascent. And this rocket is now complete. And if you're interested, the craft file will be down there in the description if you want to play with it yourself. I also want to take this opportunity to thank my patrons. You will see their names during the credits at the end of the video. And in particular, to thank my newest patron, Pete. Thank you very much. Your support very much helps motivate me through these videos. And with that, I believe we have ourselves a vessel capable of rescuing Aldrim Kerman, but we're going to leave that for next episode. I hope you found this one useful. Tune in next week. We'll use this thing and you'll see all this asparagus staging in action and as well, we'll talk about doing a rendezvous.